Well, you might have heard that from the crowd. Come on, Eddie. Not an easy game that he's got here in round one of the 2022 Kazoo Players Championship Finals. Stage two it is. For these two, it's going to be Swift. And he's up against someone who likes Minehead. Maybe a little bit more than Willie O'Connor likes Minehead. He's been dispatched, though, by Christoph Ratajski. Lewis back in the winner's circle this year. Winning a Players' Championship event against Boris Koltsov. He's in fine fettle, is he, Eddie? Having a bit of a chat with the crowd. This is maybe a bit of a novelty for him to play on this stage. He usually goes to the main stage, but this is a great game of darts, Chris Thank Murphy. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. First, uh, Charlie Paul gets the match underway. Our referee, one of a couple of two-time world champions that will appear on this stage today, Whoa. Gary Anderson, later on. But welcome to stage two, Adrian Lewis. Keen Barry opens with a maximum. By the way, the European champion Ross Smith has beaten Jan Van Vey. He won it 6 2. Neither player missed a double in the entire match. 8 from 8. Correct. Some effort. Well done, boys. We'll have a bit of that on this board, please. Because we are back in quarter number one. Where we saw. Andrew Gilding go through in the very first match of this morning's play and guess who the winner of this play is? Yes, it's Gildo. Now this will be a pacey affair. I think Adrian Lewis, you know, has rediscovered a little bit of that throw that he had five, six years ago. Looks good, doesn't it? Yeah. It's lost a bit of the, the mechanical element to it and seems to be a bit more free-flowing. Yeah, it's not as much of a twist when the dart is drawn back. 44. But the one thing that Keane has improved on this year more than anything else is his rhythm. And if he incrementally improves year on year, I think he will do what we expect him to do. It's very unfortunate. Well, that went from brilliant to bad to worse. In three darts from Adrian Lewis. Barry doesn't want that dart there. Well, doesn't care. Now, usually, Keane Barry, now, the camera angle that you see, you can see the cameras behind the player's head at a below stage level. So when a dart appears flat in a dart ball, it's actually dipping towards the floor, which is why a high dart for Keane Barry on a target like that is not good, resulting in the switch. But I do get the feeling that some of these young players are starting to study the physics how their darts behave against each other and they're understanding things that maybe other players from previous generations didn't know. Humphreys with those really long stems sees a dart in the way of tops as a marker. Right there, we don't think that's a guide for Keane, but he might think it is. He may be able to skid off the side of that really skinny flight of his and use that as the marker instead of the barrel or the stem. Yeah, he's working with half the bed, but he's backing himself to follow that dart and bounce it in. Now that's not a bad dart for him, he could fill this up. He looks in a pretty focused mood, doesn't he? The young man, and if he didn't know it already, Adrian knows he's gonna be up against it, against young Keane, who has one of the best temperaments in all of this sport. He talks about as much as a ghost, he never complains, he works hard, he travels, and he does his job. And boy, does he do it well. Yeah, travelling with him, of course. Usually, Barbara Hospodarska, we were talking about darting couples earlier on. She plays on the PDC Women's Series, which continues to go from strength to strength. Yeah, she was a commentator in the Grand Slam as well for Czech TV. Well, check that out. Absolutely brilliant. Bullseye by Barry. To double his lead against a double world champion. Gone are the days when people under the age of 25 would be afraid of a two-time world champion. Keane just stares into the abyss of a 2-0 lead and says, sorry, what? Who are you? <laughs> it's all about me, and Keane Barry is a man that many have tipped for greatness himself. The emergence of Josh Rock is kind of, you mentioned it, in regard to Nathan Rafferty, it's kind of put everybody else under the radar a little bit of that ilk. 
And maybe we'll see one of the others emerge in this tournament. Yeah, We've very much seen so. Keen Barry emerge at this venue before. You know, look at the development to her rankings for this year. It's like a who's who of under 25 darts for the last five or six years. Rafferty, Rock, Barry, Louis Williams, Kiet Nenches, Jürgen van der Velde, Nathan Gervin, Kevin Dutz, Sebastian Biowetsky. Need I go any further? Well, we'll come back to the point because Keen Barry is rushing through legs like he's got a late lunch reservation. I'm quickly making now, just look at what previous development tour players have been doing recently. Dimitri Vandenberg, Luke Humphreys this year. If you want to go back even further, Michael Smith coming of age. But we are starting to see, aren't we, the emergence of junior champions starting to do bits on the development tour and on the pro tour. The JDC system is working, and one of the first figureheads of the JDC system was this lad. Well, Adrian Lewis was once the boy wonder himself, but now he'll be wondering who is this boy. He will be wondering that, and he'll also be wondering, how do I get myself out of this quicksand? Has played Barry twice before, he's beaten him twice before as well. Once last year, a 6-4 success at a Players' Championship tournament. This year it went the distance, 6-5. Well, maybe that's the only motivation that Keane needs. As if he'd need more than the fact that he's here at Minehead again. Maybe this is his comfort zone being in Northern Somerset. 92. Speaking of the JDC, their tournament has been taking place in Gibraltar over the last few days. How long will it take, and you'll notice that the word if was not used there, how long will it take for Luke Littler to join the tour? Because he's got to be 16, right? Yeah, not long. Or even 18, because he's a world-class player right now. I would expect him, if he decided to go to Keen School as soon as he's of age, I think he'd get through. Genuinely do. Brilliant player. I don't think Adrian likes to be called a veteran, but he is a veteran. <laughs> Still got lots to give. When he gets on the development tour, I think he will win titles. I think that if Bo Greaves went on the development tour, he should win titles. See, that would be a headline. Right, this would be a headline shot, a standout moment, and it's must hit for Adrian Lewis, who wants the ball. That's what you've got to do to get a leg against Keen Barry today, but that gets the crowd on side, and he's got plenty in the tank, all right. Technically excellent, and look at that from Barry, deadpan, no fist pump, no nothing, job to do. Keen Barry there was waiting on double top as Adrian Lewis cleaned up the 1-6-4 the darts of a champion and look what they've done to Barry he started the last leg with a 140 he started the leg before with a 96 and the leg before that and the first leg with a 180 but after Lewis landed the big blow only 45 There's a big delay as well before Barry comes back to the board Starting to milk it a bit, isn't he, Adrian Lewis here, trying to work the crowd. Is he up to a few dark arts? No, I don't think so. I think he's just trying to 100. boss the pace of the game. I think too too often do we look at somebody trying to play tactics. I think the pace of the game is a big, big thing. I've played Adrian many, many times on a big stage, and he does like to dictate Nine, the pace seven. of the game. He likes to play at the pace he's comfortable with right now. There's nothing wrong with that. But if you want to play at your pace, you've got to try and almost do the same thing at the same time. It is a little trick, though, isn't it, that players employ. I know that they do it for themselves, but sometimes if you've just hit your opponent big and you give a celebration, not only are you releasing for yourself, but you are making them stew on it a little. Oh, yeah. The longer you leave them stew, the tastier it gets. And Lewis here, he's got every chance of bagging a break. But here's the thing about Keen Barry, though. He has been around for what seems like forever. And he's got the patience of the Dalai Lama. Nothing bothers him. Well, one way to supersede a 164 
would have been to a 170. I'm almost surprised he didn't go for the 60 to leave double 15 there, which is an inviting double for the way his darts sit. Now it's got to be double double here. There's one. He's got another. Game on. This is going to get juicy. Don't go anywhere. Oh, look at Adrian Lewis here. All revved up. Remember, he was, well, a dart away, really, from going 4-0 down. Barry waiting on top. Lewis goes at 1-6-4. Barry in the next leg. Leaves himself on 72. Lewis takes out a double-double checkout. And what's more, Keane breaks out a little smile as if to say, yeah, this could get interesting. But here is the benefit of being a two-time world champion and a crowd favourite because they're all in his corner all of a sudden. Well, there's no walk-on here, no real walk-on. There's a slight double walk-on from stage right here on stage two. But did you hear then the crowd were actually singing Adrian Lewis's walk-on song? He's got them on side. Now he's going to be tested. But this is where you find out what kind of dark player you are right now. When you're up against somebody iconic, somebody on a charge. And let's face facts, Keen Barry's still got the lead. I think the same could be said for Adrian Lewis. We find out more about where he's at right now when he's 3-0 down against Keen Barry. Even now, Barry is still averaging 100. 102 in this match. That's 10 points more than Lewis, but it's two spectacular finishers that have got him back into the game. He misses both of them. He's 5 0 down, probably. Look, there are spectacular finishers set up here, two of them. Is this one going to go? Well, if Adrian Lewis takes out the 1 2 5 ball, 25 ball, he's probably going to do a crowd dive here yeah if he hits this with a second ball you may hear a thud of my microphone hitting the floor 60 tops well Barry was left on 72 in the previous leg now we're suggesting that he probably would have taken it out let's see if we're right double 12 we were right and he's right what a great game this is. We're not even anywhere close to it being finished, and it's the best game of the day so far. Adrian Lewis so wrapped up in his own rhythm, he thought he was throwing first. I think Keane thinks he's throwing first as well. Now he's slowing down, he's taking over. Now who's dictating the pace? Playing beyond his years. This is why I love this lad so much, because there's nothing he can't handle. 41. 103.36 average ahead of this leg. Keen Barry, four out of six on the doubles. Adrian Lewis is, well, three out of two on the doubles in this match. I love that stat. 81. I mentioned that Adrian got himself back in the winner's circle a little bit earlier this year. 140. That was a really interesting run, wasn't it, from Boris Koltsov to make that final. But Lewis took out Aspinall, Clayton. But is it fair to say that in the early rounds he got some good draws? We've got Carl Wilkinson, all hail Wilkie. Martin Clearmark and Nick Fulwell and Pete Burgoyne. You know, that's not the worst run to a quarter final. But after that, obviously Clayton and Aspinall, two highly talented elite players. And then Colts up in the final. It was pretty academic. And he saved his best performance for the final, where he averaged 103. 82. Adrian, you require one. Yeah, ended a long wait for a title for Jack Foot. Oh dear. Just opening the door here for Keane Barry. Because this, don't forget, is on Barry's darts. Lewis was in a great position. Let's have a game of 140 or not. Will he hit a 140 to leave tops? Yes. Yes. Are you still saying yes? No. That second dart was not ideal. It basically blocked the bed for him. That's blocked a lot of that 57. Yeah, far from ideal for Lewis. 
Well, he hasn't missed a dart at double, but he's not going to get a dart at double in this visit. He has to rely on Keen Barry not cleaning up 80. It's going to be nothing in the way for him. Oh, that was a bit shouldery at the end, wasn't it? It's almost like he was trying to shoulder it in as opposed to throwing it in. Double six. He will not be happy with that entire visit. Yeah. And you can see that, you can probably hear it as well from Adrian Lewis. Barry at double ten. And suddenly they start missing. 30. Suddenly, it's all getting too much. One double one. And suddenly, like Billy Ocean, life has new meaning to me. 4-3 in what has been an incredibly dramatic seven legs. This is it's incredible, this. A real darting ding-dong between the pair of them. Drama, tension. The legs, the rhythm during the legs is absolutely sublime. Brilliant to watch. But then after the leg, the pair are both taking time to calm themselves down again because they're getting so engrossed in it. Yeah, I was looking at Keen Barry there when Lewis was waiting to throw first in leg eight. Just fiddling with his flights a little bit, not giving anything away. I wouldn't want to play him at cards. He's got an amazing poker face, but what he was showing there was about as much emotional as Daniel O'Donnell singing a song under a tree. But right now he's got to show a bit more prowess on that 60 because Lewis really is starting to find a way back. Well, I find the stance of Adrian Lewis quite interesting. He puts his front foot totally forward, toes to the hockey, doesn't he? And the back legs have always been quite curious as well. It's not the widest of stances. How's his stance in this game? Well, he should still be level because Keen Barry can't do a thing here. That was a speedy second dart there from Keen, but he reeled in the temptation of throwing it too quick for dart three. Oh. This is a bonus. Imagine the scenes of this course. We'll speak about reeling in. The big fish, though, not going to be added to the repertoire of exciting outs in this game. It's a simple double 16 for Adrian Lewis to get level. Double eight. Well, this is the loudest I've heard Reds bar all day. And it's the first time that we haven't heard Adrian Lewis. Now it's all about focus. The one thing that Keane's got left is the throw. Yeah, it's almost like an insurance document, isn't it, for Keane Barry? Yeah, is he going to pay for it annually or monthly? Oh, oh the samurai! Well, the things you see. Adrian Lewis can't believe it. He's thrown the darts that well that they've magnetically clicked together and the darts somehow sandwiched between the two already in the treble. Do you know why I call that the samurai when that happens? Go on. Because when samurais have the sword and they're shielded in front of their eyes, they do it horizontally just like that. So we've got the hat stand where the dart dangles between the other two. That's, that's the Dutch one. They invented that. I've invented the samurai where the dart goes sideways and holds on that way. 94. I've actually seen on the Players' Championship circuit, I think the video exists on social media somewhere, Johnny Clayton bounce off two darts in the treble 20 and hit a treble 18. That is the look, one of the luckiest darts I've ever seen in my life. Right then, Keen Barry. Isn't it fascinating because of the, the sound equipment that we've got here on stage two, we're actually picking up the rumblings of Adrian Lewis when he's close to the board. Yeah, well, we should probably apologise if you've picked up that last rumbling from Jackpot. Can you require Some players don't mutter away to themselves, don't they, during games? Adrian Lewis is one of those. He might be muttering when he hears game shot from Charlie Corstafine. That's good focus from Keen Barry. He has not been behind in this game at any point. But I've seen many a game in the past involving Adrian Lewis where 
He's only ahead once. And that's at the end. Yeah. One of the most famous games, of course. That counted for, didn't it? The World Championship semi-final 2012 against James Wade. Let's not forget as well, because it is largely forgotten. Adrian Lewis has won at Minehead before. He has won the UK Open here. And I have to remind myself sometimes that he's won at Minehead. He's never won this tournament. Looking to join a group of players who have done the Minehead double. Yeah, a bit. Terry Jenkins, if I recall correctly, the final of the UK Open. I think the word beat <laughs> could be replaced by maybe something a bit more emphatic. Well, Lewis knows now that with this deficit and the scoreline, he's got to get busy. Well, the shocks keep on coming on the main stage. Finalists at the Grand Slam and the Grand Prix, Nathan Aspinall beaten in round one by the Dutch giant Martijn Kleermacher. I didn't see that one coming. 6-4 in the end. Now, Adrian Lewis looking to go from four to five, but that's not going to happen. Match darts incoming for Keen Barry. And Keen should go for this for my liking, because if he misses it low, he's got a bounce at. There it is. And there's the win. He was never behind, and he was tested an awful lot by Adrian Lewis, who hit him with some hard punches. But what a chin Keen Barry has. And the maturity he showed throughout that contest just goes to show why we regard him so highly. He gave nothing away. And in fact, he didn't give the win away either. He tosses away a few mementos for the crowd, and he's got the rest of the day off. As far as Adrian, He's got the rest of the weekend off. We're going to take a short break after that monumentous game of 10 legs, but we will be back with more darts shortly after this. More kazoo. Players Championship Finals coming your way with only a little bit of de Souza against Janssen after this.